Welcome to Reflecting on His Word, a Bible study intended to help Christians deepen their walk with the Lord by deepening their understanding of Scripture. Well, hello, everybody. I'm glad we could make it for Sunday school again this morning. It's, I was going to say it's good to see you, but I really cannot see you. Um, You can see me, sort of, but it's not the same thing. Um, We miss you all so very, very much. We miss the the smiles, the conversation. We miss everything about it. And um, these these are kind of hard times with that. Sheila and I have been having a pretty good time with work and all, but uh, some other things like like my, I'm blowing up like a balloon. Uh, I'm not very happy about that. I have a home project I'm doing that's got some little nagging problems to it. And um, I've been reading the news and, and seeing online uh, some of the things people are going through. And uh, some people are uh, going through some extreme struggles. Uh, some are toward end of life. And that's a hard thing to do by yourself. Um, many were not prepared for this. Um, if you needed a laptop uh, before you come into this, you're out of luck because they all got bought up. Uh, but if you are counting on selling gasoline to make your living, you're out of luck because nobody's using gasoline. But everybody's using laptops. And so every uh, thing that comes our way, as far as humanity is concerned, um, you know, can be bad for one and good for another. I used to haul sheet metal as a truck driver and did that for about a third of the time I was uh, driving truck. And... I've discovered that a hurricane or a tornado is bad for some, good for others. Um, Every time there was a hurricane or tornado, I made extra runs in that direction because uh, there was a need for that sheet metal. And, uh, you know, one man's funeral is a sad occasion for one man, but it's how another man makes his living. So uh, it's hard to be prepared for all the possibilities. Uh, We certainly couldn't necessarily have seen this coming. Uh, 9-11, we had intelligence that said something about planes crashing into buildings, but we had no idea. Uh, we hadn't seen this kind of thing before. But I urge you, brethren, uh, as we study God's Word, to be in the Word, not just here at Sunday School, but on a daily basis. Because when the real problems come, it'll be too late to grow in the faith. It'll be too late to be prepared. We'll wish we had. Um, I wish I'd had a laptop prior to all of this. Um, Some people are wishing other things. Um, But the bottom line is the one thing we can do to prepare for the unknown is to be close to the Lord, to be in the word and be on our knees and be loving one another. That if we would do that, then nothing can come our way and wreck our day. Uh, It won't necessarily be fun, but it'll all be good for us. God blesses all the time. Um, Where I come from, when someone says God is good, the proper response is all the time. God is good all the time. Not just when we're feeling the blessings, not just when we're experiencing joy or happiness or work is going well or finances are going well or health is going well. Um, But he's blessing also in the hard times when our health is faltering. Uh, we're losing mobility. We're losing our minds. We're uh, losing our jobs. We're losing our children. God sees all these things coming. And he knows what we need to bear through these things. And his word and prayer are our best weapons against the unknown, against the future, against all the things that God wants to do in our lives. And these two our blessings. God is always good. He's good all the time. And everything that comes our way has been sifted through his loving hands. So let us be prepared, brethren. Let us be in the word and let us study. We're in Ephesians. We've just cleared the first three chapters. We're starting on the second three chapters, the latter three chapters. We are the church universal. And in the coming chapters, We're going to discover what it is that we, the universal church, need to be doing. How we need to be preparing and what we need to be doing to serve the Lord as that universal church. Okay, hello everybody. We're uh, 
ready to begin our lesson on Ephesians. We're in Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to do verses 1 through 16. The right walk and the right service. Let's read that scripture passage. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope for your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he should also descend first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for making us that universal church. Now, as through Paul's writings, through your scripture, your breathed scripture to us, that we would take it to heart and take it into all the rest of our lives as we walk about this earth, that we'd lift up the name of Jesus, that you would be glorified and we would do your will. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's go back and review real quickly. Um, verses 1 through 3 basically talk to us about walking in worthiness. There was a thing a while back um, where one would, in mockery, pretend to bow and worship someone and say, we're not worthy, we're not worthy, um, in order to tell somebody, wow, you're great, or you did super, or what have you. Um, but it's important for us, under, I'm sorry, it's important for us to understand that we really aren't worthy. We really aren't worthy. We're, none of us are good enough. Think of the finest person you know, the least sinful person, the most godly person you know. They're not near good enough to consider their works enough to get into heaven. We can't do it without Jesus. And now since Jesus has supplied this for us, since he has paid the penalty for our sin, we need to walk in worthiness. He says, I therefore, prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk Worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. What vocation is that? Well, it's being a Christian. He's not talking about a money-making vocation. He's talking about the thing we should be doing with our lives, and that is serving the Lord. This is not a Sunday morning thing. It's a 24-7 thing. It's an every day of the week thing. If, if God's not Lord over all, he's not Lord at all. So be examining that and make sure and give every part of your life to the Lord, that we could walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. We are called to this. God's assigned us things to do. He has plans for our lives. He has things that he has prepared for us to serve him. And we need to do so with all diligence. And we do this with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. 
endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Now, when we think of serving the Lord as we ought and being as we ought, you know, we we think we're easy to get along with. And when we see people, we say, hey, that's a godly person. We generally think they're easy to get along with. But I think Paul knew something that we're not facing up to, that even when we're serving the Lord as we ought, we're not always going to get along real great. So what we need to do is we need to practice that long suffering, and the forbearing. We need to be paying attention to these things and bringing them before the Lord and asking the Lord to give us the strength we need to make it through because uh, y'all are wonderful to get along with. I'm not so easy to get along with. So you need to learn long suffering. We need to ask God for that meekness and lowliness in order to get along with Robert and then endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Well, if we can do that, if we can just keep that unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, there's nothing that can come against us as a church that we won't be able to handle. Through the Lord, that is. <laughs> Absolutely. We can't we can't do it our own strength. Through the Lord, we can handle these things. So we need to walk in worthiness. And when we're walking in worthiness, we're going to bear fruit. Bearing fruit, if you're not bearing fruit, you're not walking in worthiness. I'm sorry. Now, the fruit may not be the same fruit. Uh, I may be bearing one kind of fruit. You bearing another kind of fruit. You need to walk according to God's plan for your life. But there is fruit in all our lives that will be somewhat identical. And those are the things we're going to talk about right now. Um, John 15, 1 through 7 says, I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Now, fear not, brethren. There's a portion in here that sounds a little bit like, hey, I could lose my salvation. You cannot lose your salvation. But be warned, you can be deceived about your salvation. Many are deceived. Uh, Satan doesn't shoot at those. He has where he wants them to be. If there's nothing but peace in your life, you need to examine. But he does talk about how he deals with us there in verse uh, 2 there. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. But and every And then he talks about us. He says, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Have you ever been spanked? Has God ever uh, tried to get your attention through uh, calamity, through problems, the Holy Spirit squeezing on your heart, trying to get your attention? He's going to prune you. He's going to make corrections. That He corrects those he loves. So don't fear the correction. Embrace the correction. Now, it's not our job to go looking for people to uh, harm us. It's not our job to ask God to punish us. It's not uh, our job to seek suffering and seek martyrdom. That's not what that's talking about at all. And that's not what I'm talking about at all. But God purges his branches. He prunes. He helps to trim out the bad stuff to leave only the good stuff. And that's how we're going to bear fruit. We need to bear fruit for him. And we cannot bear fruit unless we're in the Lord. And what kind of fruit are we talking about? Well, Galatians 5, 22 through 25 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. If you've accepted Christ as your Savior... If you've accepted his sacrifice on the cross for the payment for your sins, then you are living in the spirit. But we need to walk in that spirit. 
We need to be bearing fruit. And as we spend time in scripture, as we spend time in prayer, as we uh, embrace that relationship with the vine and we uh, abide in Christ and allow that pruning to take place, we begin to bear fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Um, some separate the first three and say those are the things, and then the rest are descriptive of those first three. There's a lot of overlap, but these things should be happening in your life, and we need to embrace those things. Now, it's not our duty to try to uh, manifest these things and say, I'm going to manifest peace today, or I'm going to manifest gentleness and goodness. Now, we need to pay attention to our behavior as we deal with others, but we don't produce the fruit of the Spirit by our personal efforts. We spend time in the Word. We spend time in prayer. We spend time in meditation with the Lord. We seek the Lord for all our dealings in this life, and this fruit will naturally occur in our lives. Now, as we deal with people, we need to identify when we deal with somebody. Maybe you have somebody problematic at work. They're giving you a hard time. They treat you badly. They're hateful. Whatever it is, as we deal with them, we need to ask God and we need to say, am I dealing with this properly? And if there is not love, if our, our life doesn't speak, our response to them doesn't speak of love, joy, peace, long suffering, you know, we need to examine those things. And when we find ourselves lacking, go back to the word, go back to our knees and get close to the Lord and allow him to make those changes in our lives. The saturation of the word, the saturation of prayer, uh, when those things take place, these fruits of the spirit are automatically going to be there. Well, it's not automatic, but uh, we don't have to, to fake it. We don't have to bring it about through our motions and emotions. We bring it about by being dedicated to the Lord, by walking worthy as we go along. And of course, we need to be strong. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31 says, He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Is that you? <laughs> I know that's me. I, I need power. And sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm going to faint. It's, it's hard sometimes. And I know that I'm weak. And I need strength. I need him to increase my strength. Going on, verse 30. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Uh, when I go to the gym, I, I had gone to the gym faithfully for a while, but then I stopped, and then right before all this COVID stuff started, I started back to the gym. I thought, I'll run a mile here. I, I don't want to show off too much, and I, I, I need to start slow. So I'll run a mile, and I made it almost a quarter mile before I felt like I was going to faint. I started off too fast. And you lose it. Yeah, so you have to work up to it. And uh, But God's going to provide strength that we're going to rise up on wings as eagles. It's not going to be like a trip to the gym. Uh, God's going to provide the strength. He's going to provide the, uh, the wind beneath our wings, as it were. He's going to provide all those things. Even in situations where the young men... Are, are fainting, where the young man can't handle it. The, the younger generation or the inexperienced are going to be saying, woe is me, and they're going to be uh, falling off to the left and the right, and life is going to be hard, and they're going to look to heaven and say, woe is me, what's going on? But you and I, if we're waiting on the Lord, if we're spending time in the Word, we're spending time in prayer, we're waiting upon the Lord, we shall renew our strength. And we shall mount up on wings as eagles and run and not be weary and walk and not faint. And when hard times come again, brethren, this has not been hard times. This COVID thing is not hard times. We don't know hard times yet, but hard times are coming. Trust me. Well, don't trust me. I don't know. But I'm here to tell you that I don't I don't know what's in the future, but I'm certain that the future doesn't hold wonderful things for us necessarily. It's going to be a lot of turmoil and a lot of struggle because that's how uh, nations go. That's how uh, kingdoms, uh, earthly kingdoms go. They rise, they fall, things come and go. Politics and, and world politics and our national politics, all these things uh, involve a lot of lost men and they don't care whether Robert's happy or not. They don't care whether you're happy or not. So suffering is coming. Hard times are coming, but be strong. Wait on the Lord so your strength be renewed and so you be ready for that battle and those times.
Psalm 71, 16 says, I will go in the strength of the Lord God. Oh, if that could just be our prayer today. Just, I want you to pray that. I want that to be a part of what you want to do. I want to go in the strength of the Lord God. Now, that doesn't mean you do what your little heart desires and ask God to bless it as you go. No, no, no. We go in his strength. We get the sap from the vine. We let him flow through us. We become a vessel. We become as uh, like a garden hose. You know, the, the, the water, the spirit, the coming through that garden hose. We're just a vessel. We're just something for God to come through and to work out what he wants to do. But we need to go in the strength of the Lord. We need to be in the word and be in prayer and go in his strength and not our own. So we need to walk in worthiness, walk in worthiness. And then of course, four through six, we need to walk in unity. There is one body, one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and the father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. This doesn't sound like what we see when we look around at the landscape here in America, does it? Uh, there is one body. We see hundreds of different denominations of churches. And some will say, oh, but we're all walking the same road and we're all going to the same place. Maybe. Some are. Some are not. Not all who claim the name of Christ are going to heaven or going the right place. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father who is in heaven. It's not about saying, Lord, Lord. It's not about saying we are a Christian church. It's not about saying we're here to serve the Lord. It's about serving the Lord. Walk in that unity. We talked about walking worthy prior to this. If we're walking worthy, we'll be able to walk in that unity. There's one body, one spirit, even as you're called in one hope for your calling. And know this, brethren, it's important for us to get along. And from time to time, we'll have differences that we need to work out in a, in a human fashion and agree to go forward, to walk together as brethren. But our unity is not found in you agreeing with me. And our unity is not found in you, uh, me agreeing with you or even us agreeing with our pastor. We need to all agree with the spirit and agree with the Lord. The spirit needs to lead us to Jesus. We need to uh, have our direction set on him and not by our earthly wants, whether we want a different color carpet in the sanctuary or we want hymnals or, or, or uh, praise songs or we want to dress to the nines or wear cutoffs or whatever it is that we do, all the things we differ on on a human plane. It's important for us to get along, but the, the real unity, the real unity that we can walk in is in Christ Jesus and no other. It doesn't matter if we can we can uh, talk sappily and pretend to get along. That's not going to go very long. But if we are in Christ, we will find that unity. Just like when we're serving the Lord as we ought to and the fruit of the Spirit just starts to happen, well, this unity will just start to happen. If we're seeking the Lord with all our heart and with all our mind and all our strength and then we'll learn to love our neighbor as ourself. There is one body and one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and the father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. It's not this high attainable thing that you have to get a gold medal in this Olympic competition or you're not getting to heaven. It is kind of a high thing. It is hard to achieve. You'll never master it. You'll never be the perfect Christian. But the good news is that one God, that father of all is above all indeed. And that's unattainable to us, but through all and in you all, this is an indwelling. We're, we're in the vine. We're of the vine. We get our juice through him and he's providing for us in that regard. He is in us all. If we belong to Jesus, he is in us, dwelling in us through the Holy Spirit, the comforter, guiding us through this life. What an exciting thing. It's not about your skill to do it. It's not about being good looking. It's not like in high school where you have to be cool or you have to be good looking or you have to be tall or whatever it is. I'm short. That's why I said tall. But whatever these things are that we measure amongst men, that those won't get you there. 
but the indwelling spirit can. And I don't have to be cool. I don't have to be smart, wealthy, good looking, cool or anything. Uh, I have that because I've accepted Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior. I've allowed him the lordship in my life. And he's showing me what I need to do. And he's in me. And therefore, I can walk in unity as long as I'm obedient to the Lord. What an exciting thing that it, it's not up to our strength, but up to his. Lean on the Lord. Walk in the Lord. Be tied into that main vine. And we're going to do well. We'll walk in that unity. Now, we're talking about true unity. We're not talking about us getting along because we're nice people. We're talking about us getting along because we're in Christ Jesus. I'm not saying, I, you didn't hear me say, don't be nice. You didn't hear me say, don't try to get along with each other. But the success doesn't belong with our efforts to try to get along. The success will be when we're in the Lord. The Lord will provide that. He'll provide the gifts of the Spirit. And we will be getting along if we're in the Lord. John 17, 23 says, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them and thou hast loved me. Uh, that's from Jesus' high priestly prayer. And he reviewed these things with the Father for our benefit. He does pray for us. He did pray for us. And his prayer is for our unity. That's what he needs. If we are not in Christ, we're not going to have unity with each other. We're not going to bear much fruit. We're not going to be bringing much glory to the Father. We're not going to be advancing his kingdom cause. Um, I've often equated our service to the Lord and his use uh, of us in the kingdom work. I've often equated that to an adult having a child, quote, help them, end quote, make cookies. Have you ever made cookies with a child? Oh my, it can, be, it can be a lot of fun. But if you're looking for really good cookies, uh, probably don't include the child. But why do you include the child? Is, does the child make it all possible? Does the child uh, teach you how to do a good recipe? Does the child enhance the product in any way? Uh, no. No, they do not. Now, your ch your children are ultra gifted, and of course they do. But most of the rest of us, if we have kids helping us, it's not turning out so great. But why do we do that? We do that because we love the child. And the child gets so excited when they get to be a part of the work. Our Heavenly Father, for whatever reason, wants to do the work through us. And for Him to do that work through us, we need to be yielded to Him and walk in unity. So His name can be lifted up and men be drawn to Him. People aren't going to go to heaven because we're lovely. Now, we need to be as winsome and loving as we possibly can. We need to be obedient to the Lord and have a testimony and a walk that speaks of godliness. But it's not that godliness that'll that'll make people uh, be a part of the kingdom. It's the moving of his spirit and the unity that we have that can only come through the spirit. Jesus is praying for us and in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them and thou hast loved me. There was an old song back in the 70s. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Based on scripture. They'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Amen. Um, also, 1 John 4, 11 through 12. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Have you ever thought about that? Jesus died for me. So you better be nice to me. Oh, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying, but it kind of is. Um, we ought to love one another. Jesus thought an awful lot of your brethren. He died on the cross to pay for their sins. He cares about them. And he, he likes all men with beards. No, it's not about a beard. It's not about anything we bring to the table that makes us attracted. Why does God love us? Because he decided to. I don't know all the answers. It's certainly not, brethren. It's certainly not. Because we're lovely. That's not why God loves us. He loves us because he chose to love us. And beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. That's where we need to be. We need to walk worthy and we need to be walking in unity. And then finally, we need to walk in our giftedness. Verses 7 through 16 talks about 
those gifts that he's given to us. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up into high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And he goes on and lists uh, some of those. Uh, he gave some to be apostles and prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Let me, I'm sorry, let me back up here a sec. Okay, I got it. I got that. And for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, he gave these gifts. Now, you may say, well, I don't have any of those particular gifts. Well, everybody has at least one gift. I think we all believe that. We all know that to be true. Uh, most of us have probably more than one thing that God can use us for. Now, when people talk about soul winning, people say, well, I don't have the gift of evangelism. Well, soul winning and leading people to the Lord, sharing the gospel with your neighbors is not about a gift. It's about our duty as Christians. It is our job. It is our duty. It is our obligation to share with them. And certainly, if you were in a burning building and nobody knew where the exit was, let's say you're all from out of town and you're like, where's the exit? And it, it's not properly marked. There are no fire exits. We're in a third world country. There, there's no marked fire exits. And you find the exit door. Would you just sneak out and say, Whew, that's over. I'm not going to burn. No, you would call back into the building. The exit's this way. Come this way. This is the way to go. And if you could lay hands on somebody, you would grab them and drag them from that building. Now, you ought not to. I'm not advising you to go back into a burning building, but you might. People do it all the time. They, they charge into that building and, and drag people out. Firemen do that. They have training. Uh, so they can run in there to grab people and bring them out. And that's our job as Christians to rescue the lost and dying world from the flames and the smoke and from the danger that comes. It's coming their way. And you might say, well, they're not very good people. They're not very nice people. They, well, neither will you. Neither are you. You're not all that nice. You're not all that lovely. I'm not all that nice. I'm not all that lovely. But Jesus chose to love me. It behooves us to be sharing that with the folks around us. Uh, that little sermon was for free. Um, we don't have to have the gift of, gift of evangelism, but we all need to be about sharing the gospel and sharing God's love with others. Now, I, I like having some programmed way to share that, a Bible track you're familiar with, uh, the Romans Road, whatever it is you do, but you need to find some way to share. And certainly if you have no training in that, we can get you training. Um, I'd be glad to show anybody. Uh, if you want to learn how to lead someone to the Lord, I'd be glad to spend some time with you and share with you what I do and uh, what I how I share. Uh, everybody has a testimony. Until you have some programmed way to share, uh, you have a testimony you can share. Uh, remember the blind man who was healed, you know, uh, the, they dragged him before the, the elders and the, the, the folks that were in charge. And they said, was this Jesus or who was this? Did he say it was Jesus? Did you see, was it was Jesus? Was it Jesus? And he says, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know your politics. I don't know what y'all are talking about. I know this. I once was blind. And now I see. And if you know Christ is your Savior, you can say, I once was blind, but now I see. You can share your testimony. So that was a continuation of that free sermon that I inserted in there for you. Um, but God gives us gifts to serve for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of of the fullness of Christ. This is how we get where we need to be. We exercise those gifts. We search out those gifts. And it's not that hard. You, there are people that administer little tests and ask you little questions and, to figure out whether you have mercy or grace or whatever you have. But what you need to do is be in prayer and be in the word and what and the things that you find your heart gravitating toward. The Spirit's going to move you toward things. You're going to see a job that needs to be done. Do that job. You'll see another job that needs to be done. Do that job. And you'll come to a place where you say, this works well for me and I'm doing this very well. And people say, wow. And you say, this must be a gift. And you pursue it. You just practice that gift. Be in the Lord. Be doing your gift. And you will be um, 
coming to the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth, in verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. We don't have to worry about that. There are going to be false prophets, false teachers. There are going to be people that teach you that uh, your best life is yet to come or you need to do this and that. You can be rich. And if you're not rich, you don't have faith. If you're not healed, you don't have faith. They're going to tell you all manner of wrong things, but we don't have to worry about that because if we're in Christ, we won't be tossed to and fro and won't be carried about with every wind of doctrine. But speaking the truth in love, we may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it the increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. We're all designed to fit together, to be different parts of that body. One's a hand, one's a foot, one's an eye, one's an ear. We're all given gifts. We're all to serve the Lord with those gifts. Romans 12, 4 through 8 says, For we have many members in one body. All members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ, even uh, one members, one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the portion of faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministering or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So you've been called, you've been gifted, you're a part of the body. As you spend time in the word, spend time on your knees and spend time amongst the brethren, you can discover those gifts, you'll discover what part of the body you are and we're supposed to pursue that with zeal. If it be prophecy, prophesy. If it be teaching, teach. If it's evangelism, evangelize. If When you discover the gifts you have, gift away. <laughs> gift away. Just be gifting all over the place and you will be a gift to the kingdom and to the church. And we'll have exciting times. There's nothing more exciting than being used well by the master. Um, I It's my desire to be that favorite tool. I, I don't know how many of y'all work with tools, but I have, I have multiple screwdrivers in my toolbox, but there's one I'm digging for. There's a certain screwdriver that this one I like better than the others, or this one's going to serve me better at the moment. But I have favorite tools. I have a, some screwdrivers I never touch because my favorite one is the one I want it to be. And I want to be a well-used tool in the hands of the master. I want my gifts to be used. I want to be used by the master to benefit the kingdom. And when we're doing this, when we're focus, focusing on serving the master and being those uh, efficient tools, then we're not going to have time to fight and fuss. And we're going to find that unity. We're going to get all excited. Uh, have you ever noticed in the human experience when we get focused, we do well together. When there's a flood and we're putting up sand, if people are putting up sandbags or uh, a tornado has come and people need housing and people uh, pitch in and they get focused and everybody's saying, okay, it's about this. We're looking for, we're looking for survivors or we're getting people indoors to where they're safe and dry and warm, or we're putting a stacking sandbags to protect the town. Um, whatever it may be, when we're focused, we're at our best and we're feeling good about it because that's how we're supposed to operate. And now apply that to our kingdom work. You have gifts. You're a part of the body. Find your office, find your gifts, and get busy. Use those gifts for the Lord. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Every man hath received the gift. Even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. You need to be a good steward of these things. You didn't invent your gifts. They don't come out of your wonderful blessedness that is innate to you. You have these gifts because God gave them to, to you through his manifold grace, grace upon grace. He's showing grace to us and through us. We need to be vessels of that. We need to be good stewards of God's grace and be sharing through our gifts, through our service to our wonderful Lord. Use your gifts. Walk in giftedness. Gifty, gifty, gifty. 
be using your gifts. So there we have it. We need to be using our gifts for the Lord. We need to walk in worthiness. So um, we're just getting started on the back half of Ephesians. This is exciting stuff. It's exciting to be a part of God's universal church. And although sometimes it seems like work when we look at it from afar, the important thing to realize is God's providing everything we need. All we need to, the only ability we need to bring to the table is our availability. Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for <laughs> the gift of gifts. We thank you that you equip us for your service. And Lord, we long to serve you. You've been so good to us. You have shown us marvelous grace through your son. Now help us to utilize the gift that you've bestowed upon us to serve you, to bring honor and glory to you, to lift up the name of Jesus in all that we do. May our ministry reflect your love for this lost and dying world. We thank you for these gifts. Help us to use them well. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Well, I thank you for your kind attention. We'll continue reflecting again next time as we reflect on his word. Goodbye now.